Good morning, class. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. We welcome you to come in and join us. This is where, what happens in Faith School? This is where our faith is fed, our spirit grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers, which is always God's will. His will is never that we be defeated. There's no such thing as a God-ordained failure or a God-ordained defeat. Some people will try to convince you that and tell you that, but it's just not true. There's no failure in Him. There is no defeat in Him. And the Scripture tells us that He has placed inside us the greater one, greater than anybody or anything in this world that could possibly come against us, and that He has made us more than conquerors, he's made us overcomers. And then the scripture says, the way we overcome, this is the victory that overcomes the world. It's our faith. So <clears throat> we've saved you a seat again on the front row. Get your Bible, get something to take notes with. Come right on in, sit down, join the class, and let's release our faith together to be built up again exactly what God knows we need for now. Let's pray, release our faith for the class. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so thankful. We, we count it a great privilege to come together like this. And we thank you for drawing and preparing everyone to see, hear, and receive. Grant us, Lord, utterance, anointing, eyes and heart that can see and receive. Grant us, Lord, answers, direction, and help. And we'll be doers, and we'll give you the glory. In Jesus' name, and all the class said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, go to our text that we looked at on yesterday in Hebrews chapter, uh, we'll start again in Hebrews 11.1, 1, and then we'll back up to the 10th chapter, and all this passage goes together. We begin uh, elaborating further on exactly what faith is and how it functions. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, we're told, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And Young's literal translation says it like this, um, that faith is of things hoped for, a confidence. And it is of things not seen, matters not seen, a conviction. So two words used here, faith is confidence and faith is conviction. If we back up to the 10th chapter, just a few verses prior to Hebrews 11.1, 1, you'll see he was already talking about the same subject in chapter 10. And this wasn't written in chapter and verse, this all flows together. And in Hebrews 10 and verse 35, we're admonished, cast not away, therefore, your confidence. We, you'll find that uh, on numerous places in the New Testament, the word uh, confidence and the word faith are used interchangeably. Faith is confidence, and confidence in God is faith in God. He said, don't cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Just a few verses later in Hebrews eleven six, 6, it said, uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. God is a good God and those who seek him will receive good things. And those who have confidence him, in Him and act on that confidence, reaching out, asking uh, from Him in confidence, stepping out on what He told us to do in confidence, you, will, you and I doing this will be rewarded, the Scripture says. We'll be rewarded with a good outcome. Good things will happen, to not, not just to those who wait <laughs> indefinitely, but good things to happen to those who believe, those who believe and step out. So uh, let's keep reading that 
in verse uh, 35 and 36. Cast not the, away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Verse 36, for you have need of patience. And that word could also be translated perseverance. Perseverance. That after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and not tarry. Verse 38, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. The NIV says it like this in verse 38. My righteous one will live by faith. Are you his righteous ones? You are. Not because of our, our perfect lifestyle, our perfect performance, but the Lord has made us righteous with the, his sacrifice at the cross. With his own blood, he's purchased and made us righteous. Well, he said, my, uh, my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. And just a few verses later, it said, verse 6 of chapter 11, without faith it is impossible to please him. Do you see why I'm including the 10th chapter in our lesson? Because it goes with the 11th chapter. It'd be a mistake to separate them. He was talking about the same thing, and he was really repeating some thoughts in chapter 11 that he had already stated in chapter 10. What pleases God? Our confidence in him and our boldness in him pleases him and honors him. Um, there's been some wrong thinking about what God is pleased with. There's been some wrong ideas about what is humility and what is pleasing to God. Some, actually not some, many have thought that continually uh, being weak and wavering is humility. To just say, oh, I don't know. Whatever God wants, I don't know. It's up to Him. Uh, not my will, His will. Now that's a quote from what Jesus prayed, but as we're going to see later on, He didn't pray that way all the time. <laughs> we, need, we need to understand some things. Some have thought that it pleased the Father how weak and how um, pliable as far as willing to believe this, willing to believe that, just whatever, whatever. No, God is not a whatever God. He knows. He's not wondering. He's not wavering. He's not trying to figure things out. He knows the end from the beginning. And when he has told us what his will is, he wants us to be bold, to believe it. Do you remember the scripture tells us, in fact, let's go look at it. You're, you're really close by. Um, in Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews chapter four. Does God want us to be basically a wet noodle? <laughs> and basically our first couple of answers, no matter what comes up, is I'm sorry and I don't know. Does that please God? Does he find that appealing? Does he find that endearing? Bless your heart. You're so weak and dumb. And you go, I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm just, I don't know anything and I can't help it. Some have thought that that pleases the Father, that he wants us to just be unsure of everything and weak and just a pulp in his hands. But it's not true. He wants us to find out his will. He wants us to get strong in it. He wants us to rise up. He wants us to reach out and lay hold. Hallelujah. He wants us to be 
Actually, you could use this word, aggressive. In faith, not against God, but aggressive in overcoming every work of the enemy. Aggressive in overcoming every weakness of the flesh. Aggressive in knocking aside every wrong thought and imagination. In rolling over like a tank every fear. Do you believe this is how God, God wants us to be like this. And you'll see this in the scriptures right and left if you open the eyes. But you know, if you've grown up and been taught this other thing, that 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 weakness is humility and it's not, there's nothing weak about true godly humility. Then if you believe that, then you read the scriptures with uh, uh, colored lens. And even though something should be real obvious to you, you won't see it. You'll just go right by it. Like this passage here in Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 and verse uh, 15. It says, uh, well, back up to verse 14, excuse me. Hebrews 4, 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, or profession, the King James says, that's the word for confession. Hold fast your confession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come how? boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Come how? Boldly. boldly. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. You, you hear sometimes people say, uh, Let's, uh, uh, I've just been bombarding the gates of heaven. We've just been praying and bombarding the gates of heaven. <laughs> and I'm not making fun because I've said plenty of dumb stuff in my time. But you've got to watch about just hearing a phrase and thinking, well, that sounds about right, and grabbing it. we got no business bombarding any gates. <laughs> we, are, we belong in the throne room because the creator on the throne is our daddy. Hallelujah. He didn't tell us, now you stay out at the gate and bombard it, and I'll see if I want to do anything for you. No, no. What did he say? Come on, verse 16. What did he say? Come boldly, where? Right up to and into the throne of grace. Boldly. Now you'll find that this word confidence is the same word. In some cases, this translated boldly. Same word. So to say faith, to say confident, to say bold. These words can be used interchangeably. You could say it like this. Come in faith to the throne of grace. Come confidently to the throne of grace. Many people don't do that. They come begging. They come with a sense of inferiority. They come with shame. That's why many people think, I, I can't come to the throne. I have to stay out at the gate and, and plead and, and rattle the gate. No, <laughs> no, honey child. You're, you're either forgiven or you're not. We're either washed by the blood or we're not. We're either made worthy to be in His presence by the redemptive work of Christ or we're not worthy at all. If we don't have His worthiness and righteousness, then ours is unacceptable. We don't have any. But if we've got His, this is not rattle the gate righteousness. <laughs> His righteousness is seat, sit down here at the right hand of majesty on high. That's Christ's righteousness. And we have it. It's been given to us. And when you realize it, it makes you bold. Not arrogant, not arrogant, 
not pushy, not demanding of God. God's not our problem. We don't need to demand anything of Him. But we do need to be confident in everything He tells us. If He tells us, you have authority in the name of Jesus and every knee must bow to that name, then we need to stand right up and go, every knee has to bow to this name. No wavering, no vassal, no maybe it will, maybe it won't, none of this stuff. Look with me, if you would, in the book of uh, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse uh, 17. Ephesians 5.17 says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Young's literal translation says it like this. It says, Because of this, become not fools, but understanding what is the will of the Lord. Many have thought, many have implied that God's will is unknowable, that he is, uh, you know, he keeps all of his knowledge that is so superior to us, to himself, and that his dealings with us are so high beyond our understanding that we cannot understand it. And many have just concluded that you look to see what happens to ascertain the will of God. Well, I'll pray and, and, and ask him for something if it's his will. Well, how will we know whether it was his will or not? Well, if it happens, then we'll know it was his will. And what if it didn't happen? Well, then it must not have been his will. That's being a fool. <laughs> I know a lot of folks may not like that, but that is not understanding what the will of the Lord is so Hence, being foolish and being easily fooled and duped. It's so sad that the enemy, Jesus said, the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly to the full till it overflows. And yet, you got all kind of Christians that are attributing stealing, killing, and destroying to their Father God. And they say, well, it must have been the will of God. Why? Well, because it happened. No, there's all kind of things happening down here that are not the will of God. And we are not to just go, well, I can't know the will of God. Nobody knows the will of God. The scripture tells us that we are to understand what the will of the Lord is. Let's read it again. What did it say? Don't become fools, but what? Understanding what is the will of the Lord? Do we have a responsibility to search and to find and to know the will of God? And what's the result? See, this is another way of saying it. How does faith come? It comes by hearing. Well, if we search and find the will of God, would that cause us to know? Would that cause us to be sure? That would take away the uh, ambiguity, that would take away the vacillation and the wavering, and then we would, we would then be confident. <laughs> now, now we're on faith ter territory. Can you see that? Yes. Confident is another word for faith. Faith is sure. Faith is sure. Sure about what? Sure about the will of God. Sure about what God has provided. Brother F.F. F. Bosworth, author of the great book, Christ the Healer, which I highly recommend, he, he made this statement. He said, faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith begins where the will of God is known. So if you're, if you're saying, well, you know, is it God's will to help me pay my utilities and, and pay my rent? And people say, well, I, I don't know. You know, God can do anything, but you just never know. Well, you're, what did he say about asking for by faith? If, you, if you're wavering, let not that man think he'll receive. 
anything of the Lord. We cannot pray a single prayer in faith. We cannot make a single declaration in faith until we first are sure about the will of God. About the will of God. Which is why we saved you the seed <laughs> in faith school. Which is why you need a Bible. And you need to keep your little head in this Bible because you will find the will of God. How many have found out some things about the will of God in these wonderful pages? And it is so liberating. It is so wonderful when you can get free from the I don't know, I hope so, I'm not sure, and you get to the place where, well, he said it. He said it five times right here. It must be the will of God. It must be His will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it out loud, class. I can know know the will of God. God. I can find find the will of God. God. What did the scripture say? It said, don't be unwise in the King James. Don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Go to Colossians with me, please. Chapter 1 and verse 9. Colossians 1, 9. We're, and, and you see what we're doing right now. We're finding out from the Word of God that it is His will for us to know His will. <laughs> Can you see that? If you, if you try to go on and go, well, maybe it is, maybe. No, honey, we read some scriptures to you. Do you accept these or not? And if you're going to look to something else to ascertain the will of God, you're going to be easily tricked and easily deceived. Uh, sometimes people have said, uh, well, uh, uh, you know, uh, how do you know if it's God or not? And, and you got people that are trying to act like Gideon in the Old Testament and put out fleeces. And if you don't know what that is, you can go back and read the story. Uh, Gideon, uh, and of course people in the Old Testament were not born again. They didn't have the Holy Spirit living inside them, and you couldn't tell them, be led by the Spirit. And of course they didn't have a New Testament you could tell them to read either. And so he, he put out an, the, the fleece of a sheep, the skin, animal skin, and he said, if it's the will of God, you know, let the dew be here, but not here. And then he did it again and said, let it be reversed. And so he's looking to external things to say, is this God or is this not God? And uh, I've heard people, I've heard people, uh, Christians talk like that. Lord, if that's you, uh, if it's your will, then have three red cars pass by my house today in sequence. And if not, then no red cars. And um, that is foolish. Now, the Lord has, you know, he, He's been gracious and merciful. So said, well, I did that one time and it seemed like it worked. The Lord's merciful to babies who <laughs> don't. No, He really is. He's merciful to babies. But it's dangerous to do that because Satan is in this world. He's called the God of this world. And he can manipulate some things externally. And then you go off thinking it's God and it's not God. Thank the Lord, we are not dependent on external things as a Christian, as a believer, to know the will of God. We have within us the author of this book. We have the Spirit of God, our teacher, and He bears witness with our spirit and lets us know things. And we can learn how to be led even in the small things. Even in the details of life, if we learn how to follow His Spirit, which will always be in line with His Word. In Colossians 1, verse 9, look at this also. It said, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Here is actually a prayer. You can pray for yourself. What would the Lord tell you to pray and desire to be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding if He didn't want you to know (laughs) His will? Let's just pray it out loud for ourselves. Everybody pray it out loud. Say, I pray pray 
that I might be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Praise God. Here we have another witness. In Ephesians we saw, don't be foolish, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Here in Colossians, leading us to pray, to be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And and also today go to Romans 12, I think we've got time for this, Romans 12 and verse 2. Romans 12 and verse 2 He said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind to what end? To what result? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Can we know the will of God, class? Are we admonished in the scriptures to not be foolish, but find the will of God? Understand the will of God. Are we even taught to pray that we'd be filled with the knowledge of His will? Filled. And not conformed. The the world is full of darkness, full of ignorance. And they'll try to convince you, you can't be sure of anything. And nobody knows. And why are we here? It's a great mystery hidden by the cosmos. No, if you can read and if you'll accept what the Word of God says, you have been created and redeemed by your heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And He's not trying to hide His good things from you. He has revealed His will in His Word and by His Spirit, He wants us to be confident and to be sure and to know it. Hallelujah. Well, that's it for today, class. Say it out loud again. I walk by faith. I live by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. We'll see you next time in faith school.